Tom, I've had an accident. I think I can smell it. No, that's just England. Do you remember how I showed a tentative professional interest in the new City series by Queen Games? A mix of new and old games, all by legendary designer Stefan Feld. Quince, you wanted them so badly that you made me personally email Queen Games twice. Yeah, okay, but that's not- And then, when they arrived, you sent me an urgent misspelled WhatsApp message saying, the hue. That's- And then you sent me a horrible photoshopped invitation that I can only describe as- Evocative. A creepy. Look, I just thought that reviewing all four of these games in one video would be a lovely thing to give our audience. I've since realized that what we were signing up for- What we were signing up for? Is reviewing four games that are quite complicated yet also weirdly similar in one video. I was signing us up for a triathlon, except harder, because there's four of them. I was signing us up for a four-athlon. Well, you'd better get started. We'd better get started, Tom. There's no time. Oh, no. You're going to miss your flight to Hamburg. Hamburg is uh, a reprint of a beloved 2013 Stefan Feld game called Bruges. And if you like your games big and bland, we're happy to say this new edition of Bruges comes in a bigger box with a blander board, which isn't a great start. However, this game is actually, actually quite pretty, good. Pretty good. Yes. Pretty good. Little it's board good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, quite like, quite like yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's how it works. In Hamburg, the winner is the player who amasses the most victory points in a fixed number of rounds. And on each round, you're gonna get a weird, slightly randomized handful of resources. As if the game was giving you pocket money, but because you can't hang on to these resources between rounds, players are gonna be panically spraying their pocket money across different areas of the board that they think or hope represent bargains or savvy investments because the offers on this board are always changing. This is a game of tricky tactical decisions, but built atop a wobbly waterbed of random chance with just enough player interaction to make it feel like a shared experience, but mostly you're just gonna be playing with yourself. Anyway, this game might look a little bit humorless, a little bit bland, a little bit boring, but if you look closely, you might just spot Mr. Stefan Feld. So, in a bit more detail, players in Hamburg represent uh, politicians, entrepreneurs, Hamburgian go getters who are trying to improve this historic city, but everything you do is going to cost you a card. For example, by giving up the right colour of card, you can build Hamburg's walls for a big point payday, or you can build the building that's on a card to gain its special power. But first, you need to give up a different card from your hand as a foundation and for different tasks, you'll need to fork over specific colours of workers, which you can get by giving up a card, or money, which you get by giving up a card, which horribly generates wildly different amounts of money depending on what these dice are showing. Yes, you had your heart set on erecting this particular pink building, it was the only real plan you had this round, but look, pink cards happen to be generating six Hamburgian guldens this round. You'd be a fool not to give up on your dreams and pawn that orphanage for some cash. Oh, now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I want to do everything, but I've not got enough cards! I was going to say, you're thinking, I like the sound of all this, but I don't want to be in Hamburg. That's also true. Well, that's something you have in common with the people in this game, because in the game of Hamburg, the people in Hamburg probably also want to get out of Hamburg. Because representing the adrenal gland of this board game are a selection of improbable Hamburgian disasters, riots, fire, floods, plague, and wall fall down, that's a technical term, that will randomly tick up each round, threatening to do things like remove all of your money, kill all of your workers, or fall down some of your wall. And only by spending those same precious cards you need for everything else can you stall like coloured disasters. Or you can simply hope that these disasters just don't happen, which is a legit strategy in Hamburg, and I love it. Quince, I think this game is really quite good. It's really very good, mm. yeah. The friction that's introduced by these dice, this big glob of randomness at the start of every round, oh, it's genuinely very exciting. And the card play that follows is momentous. It's got dilemmas, it's got tension, it's great. Yeah, I agree. And I really like how you can have a direction for where your strategy is heading. Maybe you're racing to the top of the game's inexplicably long victory point plaza, but then the game is constantly tempting you with off-ramps to do something else. 
it's sort of like you've decided to drive to Cornwall, but then you've somehow ended up in Kent? Yeah, in some kind of nightmare scenario where Kent is still inside Hamburg. You know what I like about this game? Mm -hmm. Do you? It's that even though it's so full of really challenging decisions, it stays pacey because you're only ever deciding on a plan for right now. Mm. Like, on a given turn, you might be agonizing over whether to stave off a potential disaster or making a stack of cash or building something dramatic, but you will still decide what to do quickly because you're just deciding between three things. These dice are gonna scramble the immediate future after all. So there's no need for a long-term plan. You just gotta live in the moment, just like the people of Hamburg, I assume because it's not like they're living for anything else. Speaking of living in the moment, we need to talk about the superb mechanic of these little flippable tiles on the end of your board. Yep. You can flip them for a little bump of victory points if you have more of that thing than any other player, but you don't need to stay in the lead. You just need to be in the lead right now, flip the tile, and as they say in Hamburg, Forget about it! I also really like they included the expansions for Bruges right here in the Hamburg. Oh, box. what's the theme of the expansion? Uh, it's a Stefan Feld game, so the theme is basically what if there was a track in Hamburg that messed with your integers, and what if there were now some boats? that mess with your integers. Oh, that is so weak, but given how much I do actually quite like the maths in this game, it is it's really, very really exciting. quite exciting. Yeah, yeah. great. So we think that this game is great, right? An yeah. 8 out of 10, maybe even an 8.5? I would say an 8.5 out of 10. It's just great. And what about the, the theme? Does it does it feel like Hamburg? Absolutely not. Yeah, In no, no yeah. way. I don't even know why I asked. The art on the cards is just super abstract, sometimes to the point of hilarity, sometimes feeling like abstract art, and sometimes just kind of anemic and weak. Yeah, the board is so drab and emotionless, it looks like an art asset put out by a city's municipal bus network, and like, in both of these games' manuals, there is no effort to explain the theme on any of the mechanics. Why are we walking down the plaza? We just don't know. Now, Tom, looking at the stats readout for Hamburg, we've got a strong showing. Would you say Shut Up and Sit Down recommends this game? Absolutely! What if I told you it was $100? Mm. Oh, sorry, I think I just caught a whiff of that accident smell from earlier. H how much did you say this game cost? This game is $100. Mm. That's so much money. Now, to be clear, Queen Games has always set high prices for their games, and part of that $100 price tag is just to do with games getting more expensive generally these days, for a whole cluster of reasons. Manufacturing, shipping, component price. And some of that is to do with Queen Games responsibly manufacturing their games, which is great, but it's just still a lot of money to pay for what is, at the end of the day, just a very good Euro game. Yeah, and like, to be clear, I would be okay paying $100 for like the definitive edition of Bruges with the expansion included if it looked drop dead gorgeous. That's obviously not what's going on here. This is like a version of Bruges that died, turned grey, and then they put it in a Hamburg themed coffin that I have to pay a hundred dollars for. Yeah, maybe we should just move on to the next game. Maybe the next game will be better or cheaper. Yeah, maybe. All right, Tom, buckle up. It's time for us to go to Amsterdam! <laughs> believe that you're making us go to Heathrow and back again for every single one of these segments. Shut up! Okay, welcome to Amsterdam. This is a reprint of a beloved 2009 Stefan Feld game called Macau. Here's how it works. In Amsterdam, the winner is the player who amasses the most victory points in a fixed number of rounds. And on each round, you're going to get a weird, slightly randomized handful of resources, as if the game was giving you pocket money. But because you can't hang on to these resources between rounds, players are going to be panically spraying their pocket money across different areas of the board that they think or hope represent bargains or savvy investments, because the offers on this board are always changing. In this game, players are making tricky tactical decisions atop a wobbly waterbed of random chance. And there is just enough player interaction to make it feel like a shared experience, but mostly you're just gonna be playing with yourself. I swear you said this before. And the board might look a little bit humorless, but if you look closely, you might just see yourself Mr. Stefan Feld. In a bit more detail, players in Amsterdam represent uh, 
politicians, entrepreneurs, Amsterdamium go-getters who are going to be spending cubes to buy up parts of town. That will then net them these resource tiles, and then they'll spend cubes to motor their little boat around to deliver those tiles, as well as playing water taxi to various dock workers. Also, you can spend cubes to build cards that you draft from a central selection over here that will give you various access to different economic powers. In fact, you'll have to do that, because if you run out of slots to store your drip of unbuilt buildings, the game starts fining you with tokens that will shred your final score. You can also advance down a victory point canal by paying crubes, or you can just buy victory points in an ever-shifting market. Yes, if Amsterdam teaches us anything, it's that the Dutch thrive on cubes, but the way that players get cubes in this game is embarrassingly exciting. Each round, you roll these six dice, and then players each choose two of them. A black one means you get one cube now. An orange six means you get six orange cubes five rounds from now. Which you can also think of as almost half the length of the game away. By repeatedly making this queasy choice, over time players will fill up their wheel. And then at the start of each round, you rotate your wheel and, well, on some terms, you might get what you need, but in the wrong colour. On other terms, you receive a gift of sweet FA from your past self and are forced to decide which of your dreams to abandon. And then you'll have turns where your wheel gushes cubes like a broken pipe. And then the next turn, you're probably broke again, and it's like waking up after a debauched night out. But what makes loading this wheel an act as stupefying and juicy as an orange injected with NyQuil is that Amsterdam is a game of needing stuff now! You're racing players to buy property, you're racing to deliver goods, and you're even racing players down this weird turn order canal thing. But of course, the faster you go, the more fractional your funding becomes. And it's like, it's delightful placing future problems for yourself by mail order. It's a nightmare. And whilst Hamburg was much more simple, solid, stout and German, Amsterdam feels a lot more like its druggy namesake. It's a game of panic and artificially slowed reactions, where occasionally you'll have these sudden arrivals of delight and empowerment. Mmm, and you know what else? Just like Hamburg, it's got the original expansions for the original game right in the box! Like, look at these two men! <laughs> What do they do? I don't know, I've not played with them. I bet this guy increases how many cubes. Yeah. Are you gonna pay $100 for it though? <sighs> Look, I do. I like this game a lot. Mm -hmm. I like it almost as much as you like Hamburg. Mm, I do like so Hamburg. why have you gotta be harshing my mellow with your like annoying questions? And also, this game is a better value proposition than Hamburg because the art's better. Well, it's a slightly better value proposition because the art is slightly better. Why? Well, maybe. Look, you've got <laughs> buildings that you've got cards that show actual buildings that are actually in Amsterdam. The people have faces. The board is like ugly. It's not. It's it's nicer than Hamburg. Mm. There's flowers in a corner. Ooh. Look, you've got red flowers. Uh -huh. uh, there's some yellow flowers. Yeah. O orange flowers. Would you pay $100 for the flowers? Uh, no, Tom, I would probably pay $65 for this game. $100 mm. is too much. You know what makes this harder to swallow as well? That it's in a bigger box now than it was when it was... Macau was in like a smaller, a smaller box. box. So this is, Make it, this is harder. harder, to, harder Macau, to, you could... To swallow. Yeah, no, I do hate that they've made it so big. But what I was going to say is that all these new Stephen Fell games coming in at $100. Stephen Fell's greatest game, or what is popularly considered the greatest game, is the Castles of Burgundy, and that is a $40 game. Ugh. So do you think the next game is gonna make you feel any oh, better? My f we're only halfway. Queen's despairing is not gonna get us anywhere. It's time to take a flight to New York City! <laughs> Just um give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, w welcome to New York City! <laughs> uh, this is a reprint of a not totally beloved 2013 Stefan Fell game called Rialto. Let's get you up to speed. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs>
In New York City, the winner is the player who amasses the most victory points in a fixed number of rounds. And on each round, you're going to get a weird, slightly randomised handful of resources, as if the game was giving you pocket money. But because you can't hang on to these resources between rounds, players are going to be panically spraying their pocket money across different areas of the board that they think or hope represent bargains or savvy investments, because the offers on this board are always changing. This is a game that offers tricky tactical decisions atop a wobbly waterbed of random chance. It's got just enough player interaction to make it feel like a shared experience, but not so much to distract from the fact that you're mostly playing with yourself. And look, it might look a little dry and humorless, but if you look closely, you might be able to see Mr. Stefan Feld. In a bit more detail, players in New York represent politicians, entrepreneurs, uh, New Yorkian go-getters who are mostly going to be playing an area control game. Whoever builds the most skyscrapers in each of New York's five states is going to receive a lush point payday, and whoever builds the second most skyscrapers receives half that, and whoever builds the third most gets half that again. So this is a much simpler game than Amsterdam or Hamburg, oh, but stop. Stop the rules explanation. This is a simpler game than Hamburg and Amsterdam, right? It has fewer components. Yep. And unlike Hamburg and Amsterdam, there's no expansion in the box because there was never an expansion for Rialto. Yep. New York City also has fractionally as many art assets as those games. It's just the same dozen or so pictures repeating over and over. And also, the board is weirdly empty. So, you'd think it would have to be cheaper, right? <sighs> that it wouldn't cost also $100? I'm really worried about how you frame that question. <laughs> right. Not only is this game $100, it actually has a significantly worse manual than those two games. This manual has a worse layout, less clarity, it actually left me scratching my head over certain rules. It's actually fewer clarity. Shut up! Oh, this is the angriest I've seen you since they stopped making that one brand of hemorrhoid cream. You can review this game if you want. I'm off to enjoy my city. Oh, the Reiner Knizia. No! My city! Brighton! Okay, so price issues aside, I really quite like New York City. Even though players are just trying to accomplish a quite simple objective of building these skyscrapers in New York, Stefan Feld has worked hard to make progress towards this simple objective feel like you're climbing a scaffold made of red tape. Players start each round by drafting cards, and then nervily try and control what happens next through a series of almost auctions, where you can keep some of the cards that you have for future use, or use wild cards or pairs to add to your bid, and whoever bids the most in each auction gets a little bit more than they paid for. For example, players can play money cards to earn themselves some New York Guldens, but if they play the most money cards, more than any other player, they'll get one extra. Or players can play cards to build skyscrapers on the map, and if they play more than any other player, they get to build one more. Chuck in a host of weird characters that you can acquire, and who you can pay some of those Guldens to to perform special powers that are slight but keenly felt by everyone round the table. And you can get a game that, despite its lower rules overhead, is still just as thought-provoking and tense as, if not quite being in the same class as, Hamburg or Amsterdam. It is just absurdly expensive for what it is, though. This is much snappier and up close and personal than the other games, with its approach to player interaction, bluffing, and bidding. It would be befitting to have this in a smaller box with a smaller price tag. This doesn't quite justify itself. What did you do to my chair? Anyway, I'm feeling better now. I got some cream. Ice cream? Yep. Uh, anyway, Tom, we better hurry up. Neither of us want to miss our flight to... Marrakech! Marrakech! Welcome to Marrakech! A brand new Stefan Feld game for 2022. A new Feld! A new day! And with more than a decade of additional design experience, I think we can expect this game to mix things up. And out of the gate, Marrakesh immediately distinguishes itself from other games in the City series by being more expensive. Oh. <laughs> Where other games in the City series were $100, Marrakesh is $120. But I know, you want to know how this works? Well, let me get you up to speed. 
In Marrakesh, the winner is the player who amasses the most victory points in a fixed number of rounds. And on each round, you're going to get a weird, slightly randomized handful of resources as if the game was giving you pocket money. Wait, I thought I say this bit. What do you mean, Tom? This is a totally new game. The thing is, because you can't hang on to these resources between rounds, players are going to be panically spraying their pocket money across different areas of the board that they think or hope represent bargains or savvy investments. Because the offers on this board are always changing. This is a game that offers tricky tactical decisions atop a wobbly waterbed of random chance with just enough player interaction to make it feel like a shared experience, although mostly you are playing with yourself. And I know it looks a bit humorless, but look closely and you might just see Mr. Stefan Feld. We don't think it's racist, we think he's just tan. In a bit more detail, players in Marrakesh represent uh, politicians? Entrepreneurs? Morriconian go-getters who are bossing around other Morriconian go-getters who are bossing around other Morriconian go-getters. All in the pursuit of developing your double layer, massive personal Ooh. player board. This is a hell of a game to try and teach. Yeah, it's actually quite tricky to play as well. I think one of my main criticisms of this game might be that I don't actually know who I would be able to play it with. <laughs> so what else is new? That's a joke about your loneliness. Go on. Uh, I don't have anyone to play it with because it's so much more tricky and involved than the other games in this video. But I do think for people who might want a Euro game they can get their teeth into, that weirdness would be a selling point. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's a universe in which the two of us recommend Marrakesh over Hamburg or mm. Amsterdam. But if you want something big and weird, and I know there are a few of you out there, let's go into a bit more detail. So, on each of the game's three seasons, players each receive one Kashi, meaning Person of Marrakesh, in each of the game's 12 colours. Then, on each round, players each choose four Kashis that are dropped into a tower that, camel-like, is a bit big and awkward and will spit at you unexpectedly. Players then take turns drafting specific colours of Kashi, permanently socketing them onto their player board. Why are you doing this? Well, each coloured Keshi you have in each coloured section multiplies the effectiveness of that action. And after each time you've drafted all the Keshis that fell out of the tower, you send your big worker pieces out to do actions of your choice. If you have one date Keshi, performing the date action gets you one date. But if you have ten date Keshis, you get ten dates! So, you might think then that Marrakesh is a game about having a little bit of every colour of Keshi, but it's not, because you get a ton of victory points at the end of the game for each area of your player board you've completely filled up with that colour. Which means this is a game of frequently having too much of stuff. Stuff you might have too much of includes dates, water, and this currency, which I believe is Morriconian Gouldens. These resources can then be spent building gates that generate more points and more Keshis, visiting the Madrasa, where you get scrolls that get you special powers, or visiting oases that further multiply your score. Then there are the Mosque and Palace Keshis that let you advance up the steps of the Mosque and the Palace. And then there's this absolutely Byzantine reward network where as you advance up the track you get rewards on a line that's traced between your two player markers. Then there's a river that players race one another down because it's a Steffenfeld game. And then there's also this fabulously weird square on your player board that holds a dance and you can get a reward that's multiplied by the dancers and they spin around. There's a lot going on. I kind of adore how Marrakesh made my brain fall out of my eyes when Quinn's tours it to me for the first time. Mainly because there's this big disconnect between what you want to do and what you actually will do. You might pick the perfect Keshis that you need and drop them into the tower for a lovely smooth turn, but then your opponent is probably going to take the ones that you need straight away from you if there's multiple ones of a good colour. And you now have to decide whether to stick to your plan and do a crap version of the action you wanted to do or work with your new buddies that you don't want to do things you didn't want to do but are now better. <laughs> just, it's it's good. Really, just really tickled me. And I like that it has this vibrant board with different areas that you're forced to specialise in, clinging to a different raft of strategy each time you play. Maybe you'll spec hard into boogieing like I did and spend the whole game focused on this rotating hexagon of bonuses. Or maybe you'll go nuts for that rewards track that is straight out of Full Metal Alchemist. But at the same time, I'm kind of content to not play Marrakesh anymore, for a whole host of reasons. Chiefly, 
that if you're introducing new players to this game, it's hard to get them into the door without them feeling a league behind from the get-go. And also, for $120, there's a whole host of other games I would prefer to this one. Yeah, uh, I'm torn because I do have it and it is here, so the question of whether I keep it in my collection is like... I mean, it is big and weird and expensive, which I like, but like setting it up and teaching it, mm -hmm. these games that are like loads of collections of discrete little mini games are just repellent to teach. Yeah. I'll tell you, this is awkward everywhere except Kickstarter. This is a game that feels the only place that it fits is on a Kickstarter page where you can look at it in the abstract and get excited about it just like I did. Maybe if it was smaller, I could find room for it in my collection, but uh, no, I don't think so. Do you want it? I'd rather have $120. That's fair. Ooh. So, Quins, have you learned your lesson? Yes, just because a publisher releases four games in a series and mm -hmm. they'll all look nice on a shelf together doesn't mean they'll all be good. Well, they are all good. We enjoyed all of these games. I think they're really nice little boxes. Yeah. Well, big boxes, they're, I guess. They are good, but they're not all fantastic. Right. We don't love... New, New York, York City, City and Marrakesh, as much as we love Hamburg and Amsterdam, mm. the important lesson is just because a publisher releases games in a set doesn't mean you need to own all of them. Mm. Well, do you want some tea? Yeah, yeah, sure, that would be lovely, actually. If you... Tom! Queen Games has announced games 5 and 6 of the City series. Vienna and Cusco will be reprints of old Stefan Feld games Bora Bora and La Isla. I thought you were getting me a tea. And also, are these games even any good? I don't know. One of them, probably, maybe. Hey, hey, don't look. Don't email Queen Games. I'm emailing asking for... Queen Games. No, no, How you, do you shouldn't. Spell urgent. Uh, you are. No, no, it, it doesn't matter. Look, you shouldn't be getting these games. You got rid of like half of the other ones. They're not even interesting. Uh, excuse me. You just said all four of them are good. Yeah, also, I said they were what good. What am I going to do? Rid of have games one and two in the series, and then not three and four, and then five and six? Like an idiot. Okay, that's I don't fair think enough. so. I don't okay. think no, so. No, no, you shouldn't do it. Thank you, you very much for watching. No, we'll be back. Do it. In a couple of years, we're games. We're not going to do it.